What's up guys? Cold morning here, real early. D-Max, got bikes loaded up, and we got Scarlett in the trailer. Hannah, getting ready. We're going to Texas, so we're gonna take you along for the ride. We got a long ways to go, it's about 2,500 miles. We're gonna be going down through California, cutting over Arizona, going that way, because there's a huge storm uh, on the east, up in the mountains by Colorado and all that, so we're not gonna be going that way. So a couple extra hours on this route, but I think that's gonna be just a lot easier to deal with without hitting snow and hopefully and all that so well texas 2k here we go here in Texas uh, we're staying at our Airbnb uh, we're out here for Texas 2k so this is the day before it's Tuesday uh, we just got the car out of the trailer we just switched it out to water um, took the coolant out of the engine so we're gonna start it up make sure everything looks good finish burping the system and then uh, we're gonna we got to take care of a couple little things uh, with the strain gauge and the shifter that we got to deal with which I'm gonna explain to you guys what's going on so all right fired up first time cars been in Texas <laughs> So here's what's going on. We got Patrick over here and we're doing some uh, electrical stuff for Scarlett. So I need to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on and why we're doing this. So right before I got ready to leave, I went and tried to test the sequential by full throttle shifting it. And the way the sequential works is the shifter has an actual uh, basically lever pressure sensor, I guess you could call it, or strain gauge as most people call them. And what it does is when you grab the shifter with your hand physically and you start to shift to the next gear, it senses that force that you're pulling the lever and it outputs a signal that the standalone ECU uses to, to know that, okay, you're, I'm about to shift. And what it does is we have to set it up in the standalone to cut the ignition for a, a small amount of time. And what that does is that unloads the transmission load on the gears and it allows it to shift to the next gear because it doesn't have synchros and that's how sequentials work. Well, I went to go test it and I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get a clean signal coming out of the strain gauge to the standalone that would do it. So what I ended up finding out is, unfortunately, 
the strain gauge front with the caps transmission is an analog zero to five volt signal. My standalone ECU, it's a Link G4, and it's an older Link G4, which it's an old school one. It has to have a digital input in order to see that and do gear shift control. So unfortunately it's not compatible and it's not gonna work. So what we're doing is Patrick came up with a good idea because I called him and I said, hey, I need a way to get this analog signal into a digital signal. So what he's doing here is he's creating a device. Basically what we're gonna do is create a converter box that's gonna take the signal off the strain gauge and activate a relay at a low threshold since the strain gauge voltage is gonna be like around two volts analog. And then we're gonna have that trigger um, a digital output on this little box we're building to tell the standalone, hey, we're shifting to the next gear and that should take care of it. If this doesn't work, we have a couple other workarounds I'm gonna to have to do that I've reached out to Link. And Link is actually cool enough to call me on the weekend and help me get through this with some troubleshooting. And they have a couple of, uh, I guess you'd call it hacks that you can do to make this work too. We're gonna to try to do this method first and see if we can get this. Um, I'm pretty confident we can figure this out though, but as soon as we figure that out, then we'll be good to go. So a little bit stressful last minute. We're down here in Texas building parts for the car. So, um, you know, the enclosed trailer, we got this thing dialed now. We, we put cabinets in it. We have a full set of tools. I brought everything I could think of, you know, down here just in case. So we're sitting really good right now as far as tools go. So. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how this box works and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I'll try to explain what's going on here to you guys. So, got a unit right here. So, what we have is we have a 5 volt relay system. We have a 12 volt power supply here, it takes uh, 12 volts, converts it down to 5 volts, and that's used to just power the relay here. So, if we turn this guy on, you can see we have power. This is our signal cable. This is what we'll be hooking up to the strain gauge. This unit has a multiple threshold trigger that should trigger anywhere between 1.85 volts to 2.35 volts, um, which is pretty much perfect right in the middle of the actuation of the strain gauge. So when that happens, five volts DC will be sent to this, which <coughs> I will uh, simulate here by connecting it to the five volt power supply. And you can see that it triggers this relay. This relay here triggers this side over here. So whatever we feed into this portion of the board, it will send to where we uh, where we need it to the ECU here. So I believe uh, we're gonna use a ground trigger um, for this. So we'll be putting a ground into here and a ground into this side here and uh, send it to the ECU every single time the strain gauge is actuated. So, so basically what we're trying to do this is allowing us to take an analog signal signal and convert it into a digital signal, which is what the ECU wants. Yeah. So the only the other way to you know fix this issue would be to buy a new strain gauge, which is very expensive, and we don't have time to do that right now. So this little box here, these little this is a, basically a non-powered relay, like he was explaining, and this is going to allow us to do that. So and the way we're doing that is we actually have a little power supply here. So we're using this power supply and it's a DC to DC converter. And so we're taking 12 volts, dropping it down to five, and then we're gonna use this to latch a ground signal, which is a digital output uh, or input for the link. And that should take care of it. So what I'm gonna do is in the, in the laptop in the tune, I gotta set up the ECU so that when it sees that ground signal, when I pull the strain gauge, that it basically cuts the RPM and allows it to shift. So, we're gonna finish uh, assembling all this and then we're gonna go do some testing on the car and then we'll find out if it's really gonna work. All right, so we've got the box installed in the car, it's wired up. So it's working, but the problem we have is it's too sensitive. So literally what we're worried about is when the car accelerates, that the acceleration from the car is gonna just slightly move that shifter back from the G-forces of accelerating because and activate the cut when we don't want it to. So we don't have a way to adjust our little box. You know, if we had a potentiometer, we could fine tune the voltage, which is what we need. So we're trying to figure out um, a way to overcome that right now. Um, we're probably gonna have to go into town and see if we can get some hardware to modify this box, but the concept is working and it does work. We just need to fine tune it. So we're trying to figure that out now.
All right, so we got the box in here and we made an adjustment. I mean, we don't have any time to go try to build another board right now. So what we did is we put a bungee cord around the shifter, which is putting a little bit of preload forward on it so that just in case during acceleration, it doesn't false trigger the, the cut and that should work. So we're gonna run that for the race and hopefully that works. And then when we get back home, we'll do a permanent fix, not a permanent solution, but that's gonna have to work for now. So all we have to do now is uh, just go uh, take it for a run on the street and we're gonna do a little testing. Uh, we're gonna turn it down, turn the power down and just make sure that it th full throttle shifts properly. And then if it does, we're ready to roll, so. Texas 2K. Now we just gotta sit in this line that's about a mile long. Proceed <laughs> to the route. down for a little bit get the car wiped down and then uh, go through tech all right we're in line for tech now uh, we're gonna go through and get inspection make sure we're good to go you ready baby yes. I can't wait Man, there's some badass cars out here guys pretty awesome being in Texas right now not gonna lie you know, if you can see that's the tech building right there uh, they're going to loop us around and we're going to go through there and uh, that's where we're going to tech. So, see some cars over there. Oh, yeah. Woo! Texas 2K. got a huge storm that just rolled through like we probably got like an inch or two of rain within the last hour all of a sudden but the nice thing is the enclosed trailer keeps us all nice and dry love it well we're gonna wait out this rain delay and then uh, see what happens so so far it's looking pretty wet but weather looks like it's supposed to clear up so I'm not too worried about it so hopefully we can get a run in today that'd be awesome
little bit aggressive. Gonna have to turn that down a little bit. done with our first pass and uh, ran into a major issue uh, definitely never thought this would happen but let me take you guys under the car and show you what happened so I don't know if you guys can see it but if you look up at the cylinder head there's a nice hole there so it looks like we had a uh, valve cam bucket failure of some sort so the way the pass went uh, put it up on launch control first gear took off pretty good it, it had a little more hop than I wanted but it felt strong and I uh, went to shift it into second and it wouldn't go into second so I had to clutch it into second and then I got back in it and it pulled really good hit third no problem and then in the middle of third gear I felt kind of a shutter it wasn't like a straight miss but it just felt kind of odd and I stayed in it and then it just like kind of lost a little bit of power so then I just put it in fifth. I went fourth, fifth, and just coasted the rest of the way just because I knew it wasn't right. Engine was still running, but I could see smoke down the side of my mirror just barely, but I was already at the return road at that point. So pulled off the return road. So I pulled off the return road, the engine was still running, and it just felt like it was kind of missing, like it was down a hole. And the guys on the return road were telling me to shut it off because I was on fire apparently. So threw the belts off, hopped out real quick. Uh, what happened was the oil, when it came out of the head, hit the header and just ignited. They got the fire out real quick. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but you know, initially I thought it was a head gasket, but still got water in it and the uh, radiator hose is still nice and soft. So, wow, never thought I was gonna, would have that failure. Isn't that the way it goes? So unfortunately, no way to fix this i mean i don't have another cylinder head a set of cams valves i mean that's a big deal so well looks like uh 
that's going to be it for running her on this event. We're going to keep, you know, watching and enjoying and going to support some of my buddies while we're here. And, and hopefully they go fast and they have a little better luck than I did. But uh, other than that, I mean, it was fun. Felt good to actually feel the car launch. I mean, I, uh, I was nervous about having enough power out of the hole, and that definitely was not the issue. <laughs> so she took off pretty hard out of the hole, which I'm happy about. That burnout so, was really good. Yeah, the burnout was solid. Um, all my launch control tuning, um, everything me and Patrick have been doing. Get in here, buddy. We were up last night, <laughs> late, working on the wiring on the clutch switch, getting the strain gauge working. Guys at Link were helping me out because we couldn't get the strain gauge strategy right. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, came all the way down the wire and all that stuff we did worked. Yeah. Worked great. So um, we're just gonna have to fix it. We're gonna have to come back out. We've got a bunch of uh, tests and tunes at Woodburn in our local town now that are open. So we're gonna be hitting that, you know, and getting some redemption. So um, that's about it. I think uh, we just yeah. get to watch and have some dinner now. Yeah, I knew this was the barbecue. Yeah. All right, day two, Texas 2K. Um, as you guys saw, uh, we had a catastrophic failure on the track. Um, I went in and pulled the spark plugs today. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I was curious to see if maybe it leaned out or something bad happened, but the plugs look great. I don't see really any issues with the plugs at all, which is a good sign. So what we're hoping is the block is good. Um, you know, Zach back at PRE at, uh, where I work, he's got a set of heads on the shelf and he's got a care package he's putting together for me to overnight as soon as I give him the green light. And so as soon as we know the block is okay, then we're gonna pull this motor out and swap the heads and see if we can make this happen. So uh, we got a bore scope. So we're gonna put this bore scope down the cylinder and we're gonna see what, what we got. And then that'll determine uh, our next play from there. All right, so we've got a bore scope in there right now. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're going down the spark plug hole here. That's the piston right there. The piston actually looks perfect as far as I can see right here. Um, I'm gonna put an angle piece on this to see if I can see what the top of the head looks like. Um, but so far, these are really good signs. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing here. So cross your fingers, we're really, really hoping we can make this happen while we're down here. There's an end for yep. yours. See this? Oh, yeah. This yep. is an angled mirror, so you can actually see up. Isn't that cool? I wanted to buy a snap. Yeah. Look at the chunks. It broke the... Uh... Is that the bucket? This is... No, this is aluminum. This is like part yeah. of the head. Look, you can see it broke the... It cracked the um, girdle. Because something got can. something got wedged, so something else broke. Go figure out what broke. Oh man. Yeah, the cam's gone. You can see the cam lobes destroyed on that one. Looks like they all got damaged. All the exhaust cam lobes look white. The front one though is definitely broken. Let's see why. Save that gasket, put it on the valve cover. So yeah, you can see there's chunks. This is, what material is that? That looks like the part of the head, more of the head. Can you hit, can you get me a flashlight? All right, well, as you can see, motor's coming out. So piston looks good. Um, we're just gonna pull the motor out. And uh, Zach's at the shop right now, putting together a set of heads for me, and he's gonna overnight them. And we're gonna pull this engine out here at the track, and we're gonna swap the heads out, get this thing back together, and see if we can get back in this race. So we've got a lot of work to do, so it goes nothing.
babe, can you give me a crescent wrench? Yeah. Sure. That's yeah. This cam bucket actually exploded. You can see there's pieces sitting down the bottom of the head. And when that exploded, the cam kicked it through the head. So it actually caught on fire right here because the oil was leaking on the header right here when it, from the hole in the bottom of the head. And they actually had to put me out with an extinguisher, which was kind of, kind of a wild ride. So um, all the safety equipment in the car worked great. I was able to get out of the car in like five seconds. So I, it was great. Fire was out got a little bit of wire harness damage that we found when we pulled the motor from the fire down to repair it. That guy's moving. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the heads off. Uh, Zach and Tim back at PRE, they got heads coming for me already shipped in the mail. Um, so those are on the way. I'm just gonna swap both heads because these are B25 castings, they're ported, and uh, the heads that we have available are W25 and they're not ported. So you can't just do one side. I'm gonna have to do both, so I'm gonna get this torn down and then we'll do it. This man right here though, big shout out to this guy here. Hasn't slept in how long? Like 20 hours. It wasn't all my fault though. There Dudley's was fault. Dudley, we blame Dudley for that, yeah. but he's been driving around all day. He went and bought me a cherry picker, an engine stand, and uh, brought that stuff down. And uh, we're gonna get this knocked out. 
And then, of course, as always, big shout out to Camera Girl. You can't see her right now, but she's filming. Uh, always here by my side, the whole step of the way, helping me all day, all night on this. So, I love you, baby. I love you, honey. All right, well, let's tear this thing down and uh, see how bad the carnage really is. All right, head's coming off, so this is a moment of truth. See if this block's good or not. Let's all cross our fingers here. Let camera in there first before you guys get in the way. I know you want to see it. What's holding me here? Just gasket, or just the studs. Well, I'm happy to report it's perfect. Let's check this head out. Let's check the bottom side of this cylinder head out. Okay, let's see here. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, wow. Didn't even drop a valve. We didn't even... Holy cow, so check this out. Come in here and look at this. This little guy right here was doing work. He's not only beat to crap, but it was holding on for dear life and never dropped a valve. That's incredible. Hey, John, John. Don't scratch up my bench. <laughs> Dude, it wasn't even like a full contact. rest of it. Okay, chunk? Yeah. No, that's what I see. Oh. What? Yep, there's, there's a little wing in straight view and... Oh, okay. We're here magnet. So it didn't even catch, the magnet didn't even catch it because it happened instantly and we shut it off. So we're just pulling the pan right now, making sure we get the rest of this lifter out of the motor. And we just oh. found the rest of it right here. Yep. Sitting right there. I don't see any. I don't see. I don't see any copper. There's no copper at all. Yeah, I'm not seeing that either. It's all aluminum down here and the pickup plane. So the aluminum is going to be probably the cam or, or no, the aluminum's the head. Chunks of the head. See, I see. Look, here's all the bits and pieces of the head. Good thing we pulled it. So we need to break clean that out. And then uh, we need to get all this out of here. Pull the wind straight. Yeah, straight from, I don't have another O-ring for the pickup though. So let's leave yeah. the pickup attached and see if we can just snake the windage tray out. Yeah, we should be able to. I'm it. thinking the windage tray helped keep it away from the crank though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's huge chunks right here. Yeah. Uh, grab your pliers, your long ones. All right, working all day here in the morning here. Check it out. Got a complete motor ready to go back in. So we're getting close. We're gonna bolt the, cl uh, the clutch on. We're gonna put this motor in, fire it up, and then I'm gonna have to do some tuning because I don't have ported heads anymore. Totally different cam. Uh, we're gonna be down on power quite a bit, but I'm gonna try to compensate with that by giving it some more timing and doing a few other little tricks. So um, hopefully the tune's not that far off. And I'll, you know, it's gonna be kind of a shot in the dark though, because I'll have to go up uh, just. I missed first round of qualifying this morning. I have one more chance today. We're just going to have to go up on the line, and I hope I got everything right and get A to B. So, see what happens. What? Watch underneath the car. Keep an eye down below. Clear? What? All right, well, motor's back in. Uh, let's see if it runs. You guys ready? John, you want to check, check for underneath? underneath. Thanks. The bolt itself, the center bolt's like blowing oil out around it. Were they? 
Oh, they sent me dual ABCS cams? Oh. What does that mean? I didn't put any. Well, she runs. We have, we're in an issue. We have an oil leak from the exhaust cams. I, I screwed up. I totally spaced it that these heads that I got were dual ABCS heads. And I never run dual ABCS heads on this car. And I was putting it together. And I sealed up the top cams with some RTV to get me through the event. The oil galleys just to block them off because I run gears, which is not the right way to do it, but it works and it'll get us through the event. I didn't even do think about the exhaust cams too, and I left them just normal and bolted them on. So they're pissing out of there with oil. So we're gonna tear it back apart, um, seal those exhaust cams up, and then we're gonna put it back together and then we should be good. But it is running, the motor sounds good. So that's a real positive thing. So two steps forward, one or three steps back, I guess, I don't, whatever you guys wanna say, but. Man, what a what an emotional roller coaster. So we're gonna fix it, but we're not giving up. Okay, we're about to make another pass. Last chance. We've been working on this all week, and this is our chance. Lots of issues with uh, cam gears, oil leaks, and all this. And uh, it's all coming down to this. We got one more shot before uh, the end of qualifying. And uh, I made some adjustments to the tune for the heads that I, I kind of made a guess because. <laughs> he ruined my video. No, continue. You know, I'm, so I'm that guy. He ruined my video. But he's looking out for me. He's been on top of this lane deal because the staging here is insane. Like, you have like five minutes to get to the lanes when they call your class, and it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it, but um, I made some changes to the map because we have stock port heads. Now we're running a BC280 instead of a GSCS3. So the V table is not going to be right, obviously, and it was already, you know, not running right a little while ago at idle. Um, I made some changes to it, and I, I, you know, shot in the dark. We'll see if I'm right. Um, I will lift if it's lean. I put the Y band up on my gauge as the biggest display I can see, so I can look at it during the pass. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna try. You know, we're gonna give it all we had. So all we have. So wish us luck, and uh, hopefully the, the next part of this video is a good one. Hey guys, we're getting a picture of me taking a picture of you taking a picture. <laughs> Thank you.